come in. Come in over our nation, the United States and the nations of the earth. Come in, King of Glory, with your righteousness and your justice. Come in, King of Glory, and execute your verdicts in the earth. Let the court of heaven be settled in the earth. King of Glory, strong and mighty in battle, King of Glory. are dispatched and released to bring the justice of God to establish His righteousness and to cut off the wicked deeds of men. Cut it down to reverse, reset, and to remove O God of the earth, God of the heavens and the sea, your way and have your say in the earth strong and mighty thank you Lord we worship and we honor you we celebrate you thank you God we worship and celebrate you God we honor you this at our nine o'clock service this morning I was standing over there and those of you that are watching my mom was several spaces away from me and I kept feeling some somebody was next to me and I could feel it I could sense it at one point I felt it bump bump into me and I said Lord what is this who is this and he said this is an angel that has been sent here and even my mom said she felt it. I mean, it was, I, I could sense, I didn't sense at this service. But I said, Lord, what is the purpose of this servant here? He said, he is here, a commander over many of the other hosts of heaven. And he and God and the angels with him are waiting to have permission. To release certain things in the earth and you know when you were just de- where are you at Shane when you were declaring that it was giving God permission access to carry out certain things in the earth but God said he was holding a key in 2024 is a open door year but it's also time to close doors give no permission to the things those of you that are watching that you struggled with in 2023 or prior seasons give no permission to sin to iniquity to struggles come on to things that are trying to have access in your life might even be a symptom might even be some kind of sickness give it no no permission it has no authority God is the one that closes doors that no man and no devil can open. And he opens doors that no devil, no man can close. This is what we're coming into. So here's what I want us to do. Because in order to experience the open door, you know, we're calling for rain. Do you understand when you call for rain, what that means? When you say, let it rain, what, what, what do you mean? You're asking for natural rain to drop down out of your ceiling there in your home? Or what, what are you asking for? First and foremost, when you ask for God to send rain, Hosea 6.3, you're calling on His presence because the Bible says that God will come as the rain. Second, when you are calling for rain, you are saying, God, because the book of Deuteronomy, one of the things that the, the curse was, was that the heavens would be shut up and there would be no rain. 
In other words, you wouldn't see blessing. When you are calling on God and saying, let it rain, you are saying, God, literally, I want your presence. But second, I want your blessing. And I want it to rain down. And here's the other thing that when you say, let it rain. In the days of Elijah, when it hadn't rained for three and a half years, Pastor Christy, you were just telling me since 2020 and all the buffoonery that's gone on in our country and around the world. Do you know we've almost entered into three and a half years? And I believe that the drought and the famine and the harshness of the season is, is ending. So when you ask God to send rain, you are asking God not only for his presence, you're asking God for his blessing, but you're also prophesying a change of season for you. How many are ready for a change of season? You want a different outlook. <laughs> All right, here's what I want you to do. And I want you, those of you that are watching, you have to prepare yourself. And I was telling this to the first service. I'll make it quick. And I, I'm not going to go into detail now. I'll wait maybe till prophetic pulse. But I had two specific dreams that I knew were from God. One was in Pasadena on the Thursday. Uh, I believe it was December 8th, whatever that Thursday was. When I was out in Pasadena for Flashpoint Live, I had a dream. And in the dream... I was sent on behalf of the King, the Lord, to confront an individual. And I had been sent. And I had begun to declare what the King was saying. And this person who is behind a lot of the evil that is happening in the earth, and people hailed him as so great at one time. Well, who is he? I'll wait and let God tell me if I can say. But I think you know who he is. And he was so mad at what I was saying because all the things that he had been doing, holding the strings like a puppet master, God had brought him to a very, very, very dangerous place. And this is where they can write and they can legislate and they think that they can exclude God from their party ticket. And, their, and their, their party platform. But God will not be mocked. And he said that. The Lord said it. And I even said that to him. I said, God will not be mocked. Because he smirked at me when I first started uh, and acted uninterested. I said, no, 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 no. You don't understand, sir. You have been brought forth now to the court of heaven. You say, well, what does that mean? You don't want to be brought to the court of heaven. And God will anoint prophets and different people. That's part of their job assignment. Not everybody who baptizes and anoints himself to do so. They have to have governmental authority and position by Jesus in order to do so. I said, you've been brought to the court of heaven. Well, let me give you an example. What does that mean? David committed adultery with Bathsheba and thought he could get by with it. And so Nathan went in. And I've met with presidents, I've met with kings, and there's ways to speak to them. And he went in, he told a story, and David immediately said, hey, that man's guilty, get him. And Nathan said, wait a minute, David, you have been brought before the court of heaven. You are that man. And there's nothing, David fasted, David prayed, there was nothing he could do. It was too late. And that baby died. When the court of heaven shows up, it is very, very dangerous to people who think there is no God or you refuse to acknowledge him. Or how about this? You worship the devil. And you on purpose have touched children in the innocent. You are being brought to the court of heaven. And so I said this to this individual. As soon as I said that he smirked, he mocked me. When I mentioned the court of heaven, the justice of God hit him. And everything that he represents. And he shattered, exploded. And, and God said, this that you see is what shall happen with what they thought they could get by with. Two weeks ago, less than two weeks ago, I had another dream. And I was in this huge auditorium. And I didn't understand it. I said, Lord, is this the throne room? I, I mean, it was so massive. And I was standing there and I'm like, Lord, what am I doing here? What is this room? What is this place? And all of a sudden the doors open and these uh, well-dressed uh, men brought in this other individual. 
and different ones that were part of their fake administration and brought them before me and God said speak now the king's decree it really doesn't matter if you believe me like me if God has something to say he will say it through whom he chooses in the earth And if he brings you to the court of heaven, his justice and his verdict, it will manifest. And so I said it to this person and immediately different people came out and began to grab these individuals and bring them to justice. And off to the side, another man walked up to me. He said, listen to him. He said, you need to leave now. And I said, why? He said, no, this is good. He said, the king of all kings wants to meet with you in a side room. And I said, you mean Jesus? He said, yes, he wants to meet with you and Brenda now. And I said, well, I'm not worthy. And he said, no, and this is not about me. It's about all of us who, who hear what he said. He said, the king, Jesus, wants to meet with you because he wants to reward you for standing for him and telling the truth and everything began to just change this is the season we're coming into so here's what i want you to do i'm saying all that because this is a year that we're entering into and you're going to hear god probably uh speak it by prophetic utterance tonight this is a year of justice and god's justice is in the earth and so that means the court of heaven and what we need to make sure that we have is a clean hands. Treat people right, pure motives, do what's right, our lifestyle, our choices, come on, and a pure heart. And so what I want you to do right now, and those of you that are watching, I wanna prepare you now, say this with me, say, Heavenly Father, every chain that the enemy has tried to shackle me with, any door that I've opened that has been in a, a snare to me, a shackle to me I break its power I give it no permission I say no to sin no to the devil I close the door to all sin I loose it from my soul and I give no place to the devil and I am calling upon you God to set me in a place now of rest and of blessing and I give no permission for anything to track me from a former season that is the result of sin, witchcraft, or the hands of the enemy. My year shall be filled with God's preservation, His goodness, His mercy, and His rest. Amen. Praise God. Give Him a big shot. I know that's heavy, but I want to prepare you. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to greet one another. I mean, how do you greet one another after that, right? But greet one another and then say this. Say, I want to be the first one that says happy birthday to you. Amen? Because you're going to have a birthday in the next year. It means you're going to be alive. You're going to be well. All right, greet one another in the name of the Lord.